right, Bob Chick here along with David Bay and the great Peter McGuff. Peter, welcome back to the circuit. It's good to have you back, my brother. It's good to be back, and I, I love this show. Tim Gardner's uh, Pro Bodybuilding Weekly Championships. It's such a, a family-type, friendly atmosphere. It's a bit like the old days, which is my era, you know. Well, speaking of the old days, we got some old champs returning. We'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, and speaking of a great family event, we had 224 pros here, David. That makes this the biggest show in IFBB history. Yeah, and I think he said competitors from like 23 or 24 countries. So, uh, again, as Peter said, Tim does an absolutely fantastic job at promoting these shows. Uh, it says volumes about the work that he puts in when you get this many competitors coming. You know, there's a lot of shows for people to choose each year. And if people are coming from, you know, all over the country, it doesn't matter if they fly to this state or that state. You know, it's everybody's got to get on a plane and go somewhere. So when everybody gathers here in Tampa this weekend and you get numbers in the 200s, uh, it does say a lot for Tim and the work he puts in. Absolutely. Well, we've got eight pro divisions represented here today, Peter. That, of course, as many pro divisions as we have in the IFAB, so we got the whole gauntlet. Um, and I, of course, have affectionately dubbed this the Last Chance Saloon, Peter. <laughs> this is it. We are six weeks out of the Olympia. Joe Weider's 50th edition this year, of course, so a big gala event planned. NBC Sports covering the event, Peter, so this is a big one, and everything is on the line here in Tampa. Let's talk about that men's open. Yeah, well, the men's open, you know, we see, see Victor Martinez coming into this. You know, let, let's be honest, he's had a lot of bad luck the last few years, which must have hampered his contest prep. Um, last year in New York, he ran into Big Ramy, and to be honest, Victor wasn't the old Victor. He's getting back there. From what I see, photographs, um, he's looking as good as he has for, for a few years now. And, uh, you know, everybody in the sport loves Victor, and uh, I know sentiment doesn't come into it, but <laughs> you like to see good guys finish well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll be keeping our eye on Vic. Uh, certainly coming in as the pre-contest favorite, David, but does he have any competition or is it purely victor against victor? Uh, I don't think his list of, you know, legitimate threats is long, but I definitely think William Bonac is going to, you know, pose a threat to him. I mean, William coming off a, a win in Sacramento against a not a necessarily a tough lineup, but definitely a top, uh, a tough top five or six. Um, William placed ahead of you know Evan Santapani and Branch yeah. Warren earlier on this year in Australia. So if if William puts it all together, he can definitely be a, a, a big problem for Victor. Absolutely. Well, we talk about Evan Santapani. I believe he actually won this show uh, last year at the Tampa. Of course, Evan uh, not in action this year, um, as I believe he's kind of working on that physique once again, and and uh, he's got some new business with uh, Prime Nutrition and the boys. So he's he's quite busy. Um, but we've got a return matchup from just last week, William Bonac and Manuel Romero, who came out of nowhere. Uh, a guy that's had the tools the last couple of years, finally put it all together, uh, working with Hanny Rambot and, and got his physique up to a great spot. Uh, him and William and Issa were neck and neck, literally one point apart a piece. And then we actually had a couple of ties in there. Uh, so it literally came down to the finals, Peter. But those two guys also showing up here, either one of those guys present a threat to Victor. Yeah, they both do if they're in shape. I mean, on any given day, a guy in shape can be the guy who's not in shape. I mean, as far as Romero's concerned, uh, he was in this show last year. Me and David both commented on it. Yeah, I think he was seventh or ninth or something. He, he wasn't a sharp, but we looked at him and said, that guy's got a lot of potential, and now here he comes in shape. So, you know, he's there. Max Charles is... Um, you remember the USA a couple yeah. of years back? He bombed. Every, he was the favorite. Then he won it last year. Right. Going to New York, he gets third. So he's like the wild card of this. You know, anything can happen with Max. God bless yeah, him. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Max Charles will be keeping an eye on also. He brings a lot of muscle. It's that lower half that's got to catch up to the upper half. Yeah. And it's not even so much that his lower half is small. It's just his, his upper body is huge. Um, but give me some other names. Now, we got some veterans in the show and Bill Wilmore. Uh, you've got the, um, the return of Big Ben coming in the show ben white so uh ben seems confident i talked to him earlier uh he says he's put on a few more pounds uh, some of that muscle that was lacking at the last show any of these guys contenders for that top three or five uh it just as peter touched on it just depends on the type of shape they're in you know ben i don't want to be too hard on ben um but i i just you know when i saw him in orlando earlier on this year he was so downsized he was his conditioning was incredible you know and we talk about conditioning over and over so you know we say oh you got to be in shape and then when a guy gets in really good shape you say well he, you know it wasn't quite good enough, but he was just downsized so much from where he's seen him in the past that I was really underwhelmed by the last time I saw Ben. He does look like he's a little bit bigger, so I think if he filled out his frame a little bit and brings the same conditioning we saw, he could do well. Uh, on Wynn is here. On, you know, some really good placing so far this year. He's been in the top five at a few shows. Uh, I don't know if a week was enough time in 
between Sacramento and here. He was a little bit off in Sacramento. I would like to see him in better shape. And, and a lot can be done within a week. I don't think enough to, you know, to catapult him to the top. But I think if he shows up good, he could probably be around that top five spot as well. Um, you know, as far as Bill Wilmore, <laughs> He's just been so far off this year. And Bill's one of those guys where in the past, you know, not the prettiest physique, and he's not the biggest guy, but he was always known for being really consistent. So I think it really surprised a lot of people, and including myself, to see Bill as off as he was this year. I saw him actually in the fitness center here at the hotel a little bit earlier, still doing cardio. Uh, and he said he's, uh, you know, he's back to his old form, so I hope to see that. Well, Peter, some of the veterans I didn't see on the list, and, and, and some of the strategies I'm not quite getting, um, some of the names that we mentioned, like a Ben White per se, um, choosing this, the last show of the year, to go in, where it's an all or nothing. You either win and you get in. Obviously, they can't get enough points, even with a second or a third place finish. So uh, I'm a little confused as to what the strategy would be of, of some of these guys not showing up last week in Sacramento. I mean, if you're going to go, go to at least the last two. At least you can point your way uh, potentially. But I didn't see Tony's name or Johnny Jackson's name on the list. Why not? Well, you, you, you're absolutely right. You know, you, if you're in shape last week or you're peaking last week, just hold it for another week and roll the dice for the Olympia. And I think with Ben White, as David said, you know, he was really streamlined in um, in Orlando to the point that he wasn't Ben White. You know, like he, he was sliced and everything, but the full muscle bellies had gone. He does look a lot bigger this time around. So, you know, maybe we should watch out for him. One I'll be interested to see is Rafael Jamillo. He was in the show here last, last week last year and I don't think he got the best deal but he's got a lot of potential and he's he's got a certain presence about him which I like you know so interested to see how he does. Now I was just going to ask you for your dark horse picks but Raphael now that you mentioned it comes to mind I think he was probably in the ninth position or somewhere the, the 10th last year uh, and but that was fresh off the USA's I, I'm not so sure that was the best uh, strategy in, in coming and probably should have given himself a little time go be Mr. USA for a little while uh, you know then get ready for the pros but um, I got a, I need dark horse picks, David. Now, I picked Manuel Romero last week, which I will firmly pat myself on the back for. Nobody else did it, but, of course, I saw it coming, the forest for the trees and all that stuff, David. Um, any other? Anybody else in that list jumping out at you? Give, give me one potential that can upset the apple cart. I'm actually going to go with, with Raphael. You know, last year, uh, and we had talked about this on the radio show, he had to make heavyweights. And so there was that issue of are we seeing him to his full potential as far as size-wise, or is he downsized a little bit because he did have to get under 225 for a show. Now, he's had a year to train. Uh, Tampa was the only show he did. Um, so without having to make a weight class, you know, I, I would like to see him, you know, he's, he's got a he's got a really big frame. So hopefully he's put on a little bit of size. His, You know, the knock on Raphael was his legs. Uh, they're a little bit up and down. Uh, you know, I think he's, you know, in his mid-30s. I don't know how much, you know, he's going to have improved on those. But with everything else that he has, I don't think he needs to bring those up a ton as long as he shows up in really good shape, which, uh, you know, it's kind of a catch-22. We talked about this earlier on. You know, is, is he going to bring the same type of conditioning uh, to the stage here that he did to the USA's? Because the USA's, you know, he had to bring a certain level of conditioning just to, to make weight. And if, and if that pressure isn't on him, you know, is he going to be as lean? I hope so with a few more pounds of muscle, and I think he could do really well. Well, the men's open, not the only story here, Peter, but the 212, uh, and you saw a lot of them weighing in. A lot of the guys right at the limit at 211, even one guy right at 212, um, and obviously some top names in it also, so we've got a good one there as well. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these guys go. You know, I mean, uh, we've got Hede in it, and who else have we got in it? He's sort of looking at it. Hede, I got to think, would, would be the, the favorite, but you got Tricky Jackson in there, who's also a veteran of this game. I can definitely see it coming down between these two guys. Yeah, Tricky's photographs just recently. I think he's the best he's ever ever looked in fullness and, and, and condition. So, you know, that, that could be the, the matchup there, but somebody could come out of the woods. Some of these guys from abroad, you know, we haven't seen them. You know, you, you don't know what might happen. Well, we got a couple of returns there. I saw uh, Rick Ciotapia's name in there as well and, and a couple of the other guys that have been around uh, that we haven't really seen all year. But, again, a lot of these guys are choosing to make the last chance saloon uh, their first appearance of this year. Uh, yeah, there's there's a handful of guys in that 212 list that could, could do really well. It's just – what are they going to bring? Marvin Ward is on there. Obviously, he's done pretty well this year, uh, being one of the smaller guys uh, height-wise in the 212 division. And there's a few smaller guys that are going to, as long with him, is, is uh, Derek Farnsworth, the freak, uh, who, again, pound for pound, one of the strongest bodybuilders out there, but also puts a pretty good package out there. Yeah, you know, Derek got, I think, fifth place or fifth or sixth last year in Chicago. So when Derek is really on, despite as much size as he gives up, he still looks really impressive and he can still do well. So, uh, you know, this year in Chicago, he wasn't quite as conditioned as he needed to be. Plenty of time between these last two shows for him to really bring it together, though. Peter, who's the better poser, Hide or uh, 
or Tricky Jackson? Well, two different schools, isn't it? Ah. <laughs> oh, has this been said before? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tricky's Mr. Showbiz. Hide's like the classical samurai warrior, really puts emotion into it and drama, and you go along with it. So it's too different. But Tricky's, I mean, Tricky's always great to watch. How would we judge two type? Uh, <laughs> Well, you don't judge the dancing skills. What you judge is the physique that's being presented and how it's being presented. It's another chance for the judges to look at the physiques, and it should be scored. Otherwise, why bloody well have it? <laughs> and we'll keep that debate going all week long, as, we, as me and Peter like to do. All right, well, we got the 212 in the books. We've got the men's open. We're going to see how that plays out, the prejudging tomorrow. We've also got six other divisions, which, of course, we're not going to go through them all, but you've got men's physique, women's physique, women's bodybuilding, uh, women's fitness, and, of course, your specialty, bikini. David, favorites in bikini? Uh, favorites in bikini, i got to go with India Paulino, uh, former Miss Olympia. You know, it's a tough lineup. There's a lot of uh, Gigi Ar Armaro. I mean, there's uh, Campbell making her return. Yeah, there's some really good competitors here. A lot of really big names in bikini. Uh, I think, you know, if I had to pick a favorite, it would be India, though. All right, Peter. David just took the words right out of my mouth. I, I can add nothing to that. I can't improve on it, so why try? I agree. And that's going to wrap things up here for David and Peter. This is Bob Chick tomorrow. Full coverage, day-to-day -day progress. We've got two days. Uh, so we'll have the progress going on throughout tomorrow and the prejudging and, of course, the finals tomorrow night. And there's also a prejudging and a finals Saturday night. Of course, we'll be covering it all right here at MD, your leader in multimedia coverage in the world of bodybuilding.